welcome students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Uh, this here is chapter seven, discounts, trade, and cash. This is going to be the theory portion of the uh, set of videos for this particular chapter. Uh, remember, I'll be doing the, the drills, the word problems, and the summary practice test in other videos. So this is just going to be covering uh, concepts and theory that students seem to have uh, a bit of a difficult time with uh, throughout the chapter. So the number of videos that this will take up, I don't know. Uh, I'm, you know, as many as it takes, I'm going to try to keep them at 10 minutes each or right around there. And uh, we'll just see how many it, it encompasses. Um, and as always, uh, you can pause and rewatch the videos. Um, and especially when you're doing homework problems, if you don't understand something, you know, you know, you can watch it as many times as you need. Um, and if you still don't understand, then you can telephone and speak with an instructor or you know, contact us via email. Okay, so let's move on to the theory here. All right. Okay, get my pen. All right, there's my pen. Uh, now the next slide. Okay. Oop. All right. Yep, there we go. All right. Um, so, uh, trade discounts and net price. Uh, you know, the trade discount amount is equal to the list price times the trade discount rate. So let's say the list price is $100. And the trade discount rate, let's say it's 20%, okay? That will equal the trade discount amount, $20. All right, so think about it. Uh, and then, you know, honestly, this math is very similar to what we had covered in percents and, you know, the previous chapter, chapter six, percents and its applications. Um, you know, you walk into a store and you see, you know, sweaters there for a hundred bucks and there is a discount of 20%. Well, you know, easily you say, okay, a hundred times 20% uh, is the $20 that you're going to get off. Now the reciprocal of it, remember when we think in terms of, let me diagram it out here, this is $100 or 100%, okay? And if we take out this slice right here, okay? And we say that's 20%, well, that's $20. The reciprocal, the opposite of it is all of this area in here, and that's 80% or $80. Okay, you know, and it's easy to think in terms of $100, but when you're thinking in terms of $316.48, and then you get 20% off, now that, you know, you end up doing all of the math, okay? Um, but the math is no different whether the numbers are easy to work with or not. So you'll generally see, when you, whenever you see a trade discount, um, you're going to know what the list price was, and you're going to know what the discount is, the percentage of a discount. And you can either calculate the percentage or the uh, amount of the trade discount. And again, if you take the discount from the list price, that gives you the reciprocal uh, amount of how much you're going to have to pay. All right? So, which would be our net price. So here we have our list price of $100 minus the trade discount amount of $20, okay? And that's going to equal our net price of $80, okay? Now, that's very simple. And, you know, you kind of, you know, if you work through chapter six in the percents and its applications, you had plenty of word problems that dealt with this. We were always talking about, you know, here was our dollar amount, you know, we subtracted some amount and we had uh, a total amount, all right? And that was also equal to 100%. This sum amount was a percentage also, okay? And that gave us a total percentage, all right? Um, this is no different. I mean, think about it. We have $100 and we're taking away 20% over here, which is equates to $20 over here. And that gives us our $80 as our final, our bottom line. And of course, 100% less 20% is 80%. So you can see that it's exactly the same. Now, the I put down here on the bottom, um, shipping 
and freight are not included okay in whenever you're taking a discount and that confuses some students let's say for example uh, you have a hundred dollars um, in a sale and let's say shipping is going to be $25 okay well let's say there's a 20% discount now what will happen is some students will go well that's 125 because the hundred dollars for retail and 25 for shipping gives me 125 and then they'll take the 20% of the 125 and you get uh, about let's see here $15 uh, I'm sorry $25 okay um, and that's wrong that's you don't take you can't take trade discounts on the shipping the way you think about that is uh, shipping is generally done by a third party okay so if, if I'm selling I'm just gonna make something up here if I'm selling an ice cream machine for $10,000 and I'm going you know I have to ship it and let's say I have to contact the shipping company and the shipping company is going to charge five hundred dollars to ship well that's a third party okay that has nothing to do between the buyer and the seller and the ten thousand right so if I'm selling a machine for ten thousand and I give a twenty percent discount that means I'm only going to get um, $8,000. Let me erase that to make it a little cleaner. Um, that means I'm only going to get $8,000. And then I take the tax on that, say 6%, which would be $480. So I'd end up um, paying, the, the person buying it would end up owing uh, $8,480 to me plus the five hundred dollars for shipping or not it all depends upon what who what or how we agree upon the shipping okay and that's going to be covered in our next slide um, on freight terms so you have to really think about uh, the trade discount only being on the retail amount and shipping in and of itself stand separately okay so now that I've beat that uh, horse to death okay um, Let's move on to the next slide and let, let us talk about the freight terms. Okay, freight terms. There's two types, FOB shipping point and FOB destination point. FOB means, uh, stands for freight on board. Okay, and the way I like to think about this and the way I remember it, because you're kind of like, you, this is something that you do memorize, okay? So you have the buyer here. I'm sorry, let's, let me make that the seller. I have the seller here, and I have the buyer over here, okay? Now, we, you know, just like from our previous example, let's say it's an ice cream machine for $10,000, okay? And for sake of argument, there is no discount, all right? Well, actually, let's use it and say there is a 20% discount, okay? That means um, there's going to be a $2,000 off, right? So 2000 from uh, $10,000, it means I'm going to end up paying $8,000. I mean, the buyer is going to end up paying $8,000 plus the tax, 6%, which is 480 So now he's up to 8480 And now we have to talk about shipping, which is... Five hundred dollars. Okay, so right now um, the buyer is paying eighty-four eighty, but we have to discuss whether um, how this is going to be shipped, and this is all part of the negotiation between buyers and sellers, especially on bigger ticket items. Um, if we decide that me, the seller, I have to pay for the freight, okay, that means. I'm going to want to use FOB destination. Okay. Why? Because I'm responsible for what happens to that machine 
from the time it leaves my dock, okay, here's my dock, and it goes on the truck, right, and it gets shipped all the way over to the buyer's dock, right? Well, I'm responsible for it all the way up until it actually gets off of the truck onto the dock, okay? So even though the truck, let me draw a little truck here, like my drawings here, okay? Even though the truck is backed up to the dock, as long as that machine is still on the truck, it's the responsi responsibility of the seller. Right? This is a legal issue, okay? This is nothing, you know, the freight company, the third party freight company, you know, they're doing the hauling, but who's responsible for it is strictly a legal issue. So if I'm, if I'm the seller and I'm going to be paying the freight, okay, I'm going to have it as FOB destination because as the seller, I'm responsible all the way up until it gets to the dock. Now, let's say this guy here, right, my, my guy here, he's moving that machine off and he drops it and breaks the machine and it hasn't hit the dock yet. Okay, well, guess what? That's the seller's responsibility. And if he totaled the machine, you know, I'm out a new machine and I'm going to have to ship another machine to the buyer. Okay, that's just the legalities of it. Now, and that would also mean that as the buyer, I would only end up paying the 8480, right? Because the seller is eating the cost of the $500 on the shipping. But now let's say um, in our negotiations, you know, or however I'm selling it, well, the buyer has to pay for the freight, okay? Well, in that case, it's going to be FOB. I'm going, me as the seller, when I create the invoice, right, I'm going to put FOB shipping, okay? The reason why is because as soon as it leaves my dock, since the buyer is paying for it, okay, as soon as it leaves my dock and gets on a truck, okay, it is now the responsibility of the, uh, the buyer, okay? All, you know, so if that truck, you know, has an accident along the way or whatever have you and totals the totals the ice cream machine well then they you know have a worthless machine and they're going to have to buy another one for me so in that case here if the invoice was 8480 before the shipping now we're going to have to add the $500 to the invoice so the buyer is going to end up paying 8980 you know 8480 plus the 500 um, his total invoice is going to be $8,980 because he's paying for the shipping, okay? So let me erase some of all of this to make it uh, a little bit nicer, and easier to understand. Okay. And let me draw in the buyer here, okay? So the easy way to remember this is if it's, a, if it's the seller who's paying for the freight, then you want to use destination, like the far end. If it's the buyer who's um, paying for the freight, then you want FOB shipping, right? Because it's a matter of which dock. This is the shipping dock, and this is the destination dock, right? So the buyer, you know, he's responsible from the time it leaves my dock. If I'm if I'm responsible as the seller, I'm responsible for it all the way up until it gets onto his dock, the destination. Okay, so that's uh, freight terms. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to give a call. And I'm going to stop the video here, and we'll pick up in the next one.